Good morning and welcome to another Midweek Reflection. And at this time in between Easter and Pentecost, I'd like to read to you a little bit from the book of John, uh, chapters 24 to 29. But Thomas, who was called the twin, one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, we have seen the Lord. But he said to them, unless I see the mark of the nails in his hands and put my finger in the mark of the nails and my hand in his side, I will not believe. A week later, his disciples were again in the house and Thomas was with them. Although the doors were shut, Jesus came and stood among them and said, peace be with you. And then he said to Thomas, put your finger here and see my hands. Reach out your hand and put it in my side. Do not doubt, but believe. Thomas answered him, my Lord and my God. And Jesus said to him, have you believed because you have seen me? Blessed are those have, who have not seen and yet have come to believe. Amen. In the three houses closest to ours, we have a seven month old baby, an 18 month old, a three year old and a five year old. Every one of them is delightful and really good fun. And we often congregate in our street to chat and play together. And what strikes me about the little ones is how curious they are. How often we hear the older boys ask why and how completely absorbed each one of them is in the moment. It's a joy to witness. And it reminds me that as humans, we are built to ask questions and to know more. All my life, I've asked contrary questions and I've been very cynical about a lot of things. I need to be sure that something is true before I'll commit to it. I would only believe in God when I had a scales from the eyes conversion experience with God actually speaking directly to me. And that is why, unlike some commentators, I relate to Thomas. I don't think even for a moment that Thomas's doubt indicated a lack of faith in Jesus. Put yourself in his shoes. He's followed Jesus faithfully for three years. He's been loyal and utterly committed to Jesus throughout. But in the last week prior to this experience, he had witnessed the crowds go crazy, shouting for Jesus's death. He saw the beaten Jesus carry his own cross up the streets to Golgotha, have nails driven through his hands and feet and be hoisted into the air where he died in excruciating pain for all to see. Thomas witnessed the darkening sky, the ripped curtain, the empty tomb, and the fear of his fellow disciples. He had just spent days in mourning and confusion, in hopelessness, suspecting that all that Jesus had spent three years teaching was false or at the very least mistaken. To go from there to an instant acceptance that a phantom appearance is in fact the risen Jesus would be ludicrous. I admire doubting Thomas. He was honest enough to voice his thoughts. He wasn't prepared to accept wild reports unless there was evidence to support the claims. The other disciples had the advantage of seeing Jesus, but Thomas only had their account. And when after a long week, Jesus eventually returned and spoke to his disciples, he turned to Thomas and offered his hands and side, inviting Thomas to touch the wounds to prove that he was real. And with that evidence, Thomas had no hesitation in worshipping and acknowledging Jesus as his Lord and God. Jesus gave Thomas the evidence that he needed, the same way that God gave me the evidence that I needed in order to believe. 
We are made to be curious, questioning creatures, to study the Bible and to ask questions. To doubt and to test is what strengthens our faith, not what calls it into question. We have the evidence of the Gospels and all the history of Christian thought since those days when Thomas was around to examine and test and find a sense in it all. In verse 29, Jesus said to Thomas, have you believed because you've seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have come to believe. I don't read those words as a criticism of Thomas, rather as a word to us, to those who haven't had the privilege of touching Jesus's wounds in person, but having examined the evidence, still come to the conclusion that the risen Jesus is our Lord and God, our Saviour and our Shepherd. So I suggest to you that it's fine to be a doubting Thomas. Be curious, ask questions, examine the evidence for Christ, which has thrived for over 2000 years and populations in every culture. And be assured that in your questions and in your belief, you are blessed. Amen.